Hey folks, welcome back to Green Iron TV. Yes, we are not down in the garage. We are here in my little cave workshop here at the house because it's frigid cold and snowing outside like always here in Michigan. So we're going to continue on with uh, part two of working on our 135th scale uh, AFE Club's uh, M54A2 gun truck, the eve of destruction. So We have uh, most all the main bits and pieces, all the main stuff built. Now it's down to some small details, uh, decaling, finish, touch up painting, um, and basically taking care of all this, the finishing stuff and weathering and some washes and stuff like that uh, to make that truck look lived in. Uh, we've been working on a couple figures to go with it. So that's what's going to be coming up so thank you all for sticking around i know this has been a little bit of a departure from our normal uh working on full-size military vehicles but uh it is what i do in the winter to uh to uh give myself a little bit of green iron injection by uh working on the small scale stuff so thanks a lot and like always please give us a like leave a comment and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button we appreciate all you and like always you know, check the link down below for the merchandise store. Check out all the cool green iron shirts. Uh, we have shirts, sweatshirts, hats, t-shirts, stickers, all kinds of cool things uh, featuring the M715, 725 ambulances, and the M38A1 Jeeps, like the ones that we've restored so far. Um, and uh, check them out. They're pretty cool. And uh, we thank you for watching. Okay, we have a bunch of the small pieces laid out here, little sub-assemblies and stuff like that that we've been building, stuff like our M2 50 cal machine guns. And of course, one of the nice things with this kit is the way that these uh, 50 cals are built is all individual little pieces. It does make them kind of tedious, but it does allow us to model this one with the open receiver. So we're gonna have this one modeled with the open receiver with a gun belt laying across it, uh, like it's uh, ready to, uh, ready for use. Uh, we have our RT524 radio and we've uh, updated it with a cable and a handset uh, so that we can add that in. Try to focus in here. Come on. <laughs> Might have to... There we go. It'll focus a little bit. But, uh, and of course we added our Orange indicator light up in the corner there. We custom built a, out of some scrap and styrene, a siren for the fender, uh, because that's missing from the, from the kit as well. Uh, and of course, um, they have the radio antenna mount for the vehicle, but no antenna. Um, so we went ahead and scratch built this antenna and, uh, it's just a piece of piece of styrene rod uh, drilled and inserted through the hole. Uh, we put a tip of our drops of super glue here on the top to make the tip, to make the ball tip. And then down here towards the bottom, uh, wrapped it in some wire there to simulate the uh, return spring on the, uh, on the antenna. Uh, that's how, you know, that's one of the problems a lot of times in models. So a lot of times modelers want to take this and just bend it over like this. And that is not how these antennas work in the military. It's not how they do. So they don't, don't bend them over like that. You want to actually bend it down here where the spring base is. And so you'll bend the spring base. Then, it'll, then you can have just a little bit in the upper. But these poles are very rigid in the real life. And so uh, they stay pretty straight when they're bent over. Um, we'll start a picture here of a, of a real one. And there you can see how that stays pretty, pretty rigid and has just a little bent out at the very end. So we'll, we'll simulate that 
uh, we're, when we put this in, we're going to put it in the radio er, in the armor box, and we're going to have it bent back and tied off. Bunch of ammo cans, gas cans. Um, we've got a uh, water cooler. Uh, of course, our figures in the background that we've been uh, picking away at. Uh, got just a couple base coats, so some color on them to get started. Our weapons for in the weapons racks and yeah, for in the weapons racks and uh, for the one guy to be holding. So that's our little tiny M16 A1. And of course, we still have a few small bits and pieces. So you know, we have like the bridge plate here and. Uh, the toe shackles and so on the on this vehicle the toe shackles are actually painted white um, so we went ahead and started kind of pre-painting those to get them ready and we'll do some final pieces on them so we're gonna go ahead next uh, now that we have a lot of all this stuff so probably the next thing we're gonna end up doing um, because we don't want to put a lot of the small detail on and then try and do a bunch of more work because you'll end up knocking it off so a lot of the small t detail stuff will be added at the end so probably the next thing that's going to get done is we're going to work on putting decals so we're going to go ahead and do the decaling um, on the main body of the truck and get that uh, all set up and looking good and then from there we can start adding in the small details once we have all the small details and then we can go ahead and start weathering the truck All right, one of the things we need to do is we need to paint our yellow stripes on the hood. So we've gone ahead, laid out some masking tape here. Uh, got this all laid out and ready. Uh, one of the things to note too is uh, I built my own guidelines. Um, the ones in the kit are okay, uh, but they take a ton of cleanup and it's such a fine piece. So I just used a piece of, uh, of plastic tubing and uh, styrene and then we've drilled down through the bumper and actually placed it through the bumper like it's properly supposed to be so anyway we're going to go ahead we're going to paint our yellow hood stripe uh, and get that on there And of course we know painting this lighter yellow over the black is going to be a bit of a pain. So we're going to have to build this in a couple layers. So we'll go ahead and we'll get a nice little kind of base coat down. We'll let that kind of dry up. And then we'll come back and do another coat over it. So we'll go ahead and we'll let that set up and put another coat on it here in a little bit. Here we got a couple little spots bleed through. We'll just touch that up with a little touch up paint. Should be looking good. Okay, let's move on to some decals. So, we're going to start with the box eye with the Eva Destruction. So, we're going to go ahead and get our stuff wet and get it ready. And we do have a little uh, micro set to help help get it set down. Brush 
a little of that in the areas where we're going to put the decals. And these are some nice thin decals and they're going on nice. Looking at some reference photos just to try and make sure we get it in the right position. Because like anything, this was not painted super square and tight, so it can be off just a little bit. So now we'll go back and we'll kind of dab out the excess water. Looking good. So one of the things, these are a couple spots where this runs over the armor. We just want to take a toothpick, just kind of help tuck it all down in there good. Flip over and hit the other side. Once again, we're gonna kind of go along our body lines there. All right, the Eve. Next, we got our hood numbers going across. Okay, our warnings for the door bottoms.
one last little set of decals. The actual bridge plate, this is phenomenal. Didn't do this on camera because it was just so small to deal with, but if you look ever so closely right there, you can see the little red C for combined weight and the 24 for this weight class. So that's really cool to have these uh, for the bridge plate. Makes that bridge plate look really cool. Okay, so that gets all the major decals on. Um, our big Eve of Destruction for down the gun box. Our fuel tank warnings. Air tank daily, drain air tanks daily, just like on the real big real vehicles. The uh, Vietnamese warning hood numbers. Uh, we got our bumper unit markings. Of course, on the back we got our army registration and, and number, and our unit numbers on the back. So now that we got all the all the major decaling. We'll, pro we'll go ahead, we're going to let this set up, and then we're going to go ahead and seal this uh, with a nice matte varnish to uh, hold these decals down and make everything look real good. Okay, truck's all covered with a nice dull coat from, uh, from Tamiya, and so... Start adding in some of these details. So we have this bridge plate, and that's going to attach to the front fender. So we're going to go ahead and drop glue in there. Get that all mounted up, looking nice there. Uh, we also got our homemade siren. And according to original photos, it's going to attach here to the fender on the driver's side. Of course, we have our radio to mount, and that goes on the radio shelf here. And we're going to have our antenna. Of course, I've gone ahead and kind of bent, bent it on that 45 degree angle, so when it's mounted, it's going to be back like that, and then we'll tie it down, and it'll have just a little slight bend at the end. set up in the corner there we can add the M60 into its rifle holder there In the back here, we're going to have an M16. It was a, probably a crew member's personal weapon. Okay, it's a good start on some of the stuff, so we'll keep uh, adding a few bits and pieces along it. 
So uh, we have the two spare tires and unlike the kit, instructions show just one way up there. Uh, I have seen a couple in-country pictures and they seem to have two towards the back. So we're gonna, we're gonna put both these in here. Facing towards the back. Perfect. And then we're going to put some ammo cans across the back. So first we're going to kind of build the area up a little bit with some of those big cans. cans right on in there nice fills that up makes that look good yeah we also got a bunch of fuel cans so we're gonna stick some fuel cans along the back And of course, there's no strap, so we're going to have to make some strap out of a little piece of tape. So we'll do that. We'll put a little piece of tape in there, make a strap, and paint it up when we get the opportunity. Also here in the back, maybe we'll stick a big... One of the big ammo cans. So. so one of the things we're going to want to do is we're trying to fill this vehicle up but then not make it look crazy over full of stuff. Um, you know, we have some more ammo cans that we're going to drop down in it. Uh, we got some crates. We got that water can that I'm going to put up front. The Merrimite cans, which are going to go in so that the guys can sit on them. Um, we got some more, you know, we got some more ammo cans, a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, a couple more fuel cans, stuff like that, to drop in there. So we're gonna we're gonna work on that. Got a duffel bag, stuff down it. So we're gonna work on stuffing in a few bits and pieces. Just trying to fill that compartment out, fill it out like it would have been. It just doesn't want to drop in the spot I want it in.
right, so we got uh, a bunch of stuff down in there. That's what we were looking for. We, you know, we want to make this truck look like it's uh, loaded out and ready to roll. Okay, we're going to paint a couple of little white details uh, on Eve. Uh, in a lot of photos, you'll see these hinges are painted white, the lug nuts are painted white, uh, the front of the grill is painted white, uh, the hinges on the back. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint some of those little pieces. And the center portion of the grill is painted on the EU. Now, so some in some pictures, I've seen the straps on the air cleaner painted white, and some uh, pictures it's not painted white. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna paint them white. I think I'm gonna do it. All right, a few little bits of touch up, and that's looking pretty good. Okay, now that we got a lot of all those accessories in there and all that trim painted, um, we've been working on our figures. Getting those guys looking good so that we can place them in the vehicle. And once we do that, then we can uh, start doing some, some washes, uh, some stuff like that, and we'll get it buttoned up. But one of the things we want to do is we want to get this radio antenna tied down. And uh, we're just going to simply use some thin green thread and I imagine that they probably just tied it down off the bar here so Just to kind of keep them from untying, so. 
once that all dries off, then we'll come back. We're gonna nip off our nip off our ends. Okay, we broke the airbrush out. Did a little playing with it, get it dialed in good. But the object is, we wanted to create kind of just this, uh, not necessarily muddy, but a truck that's seen dirt and dust and items like that. You know, looking at pictures of the eve of destruction, you know, the truck was never muddy. It was pretty well kept. It ran on the highways uh, and stuff like that. So it was never, you know, in big muddy messes or anything like that. But, you know, it would have just accumulated some road grime and, and dirt over its over its travels. So, you know, that's what we're doing here. We're kind of trying to create like that uh, nice light kind of grime and dirt along the uh, the, the wheels, the bottom. And, you know, get that nice kind of faded effect up the box sides. Um, you know, paying attention to things like, uh, you know, where it'll kick mud up or and dust up along the front edges. Stuff like that. So, we, uh, you know, then also, you know, even though the doors aren't attached, we did a little bit, you know, along the bottom edge of the doors there so it all kind of matches in and uh that gets that pretty good heavy weather effect going and uh now we'll do some uh shading on the insides and and stuff like that and keep on working so one of the things we know is going to be is all these ammo boxes in here would have accumulated a lot of dirt and dust, basically from the guys walking and standing on them and stuff like that. So uh, we're going to give them a nice kind of, we're going to use that same uh, what paint. Was I just used some cheap, there was this, just some cheap uh, craft paint, chestnut, kind of a, a nice reddish brown. And so we're just going to simply paint this a little bit of a wash in here over all these ammo cans and we're just going to kind of let it flow down and in and around all the little cracks and crevices and then we're going to come back and we're going to kind of wipe a little bit of this excess away, stuff like that. Um, so now we're going to kind of just go in and we're just going to kind of blot. And what that's doing is that's just kind of taking all the heavy stuff off the tops and it's going to leave it all down in kind of the cracks and crevices and give that nice kind of dirty look. We'll also use a little 
extra thinner or extra water kind of helps. We also want to kind of get in where around the cab we know dirty feet are going to be dragging this all in So here's the nice thing with these acrylics, you get a little much, you can just dab it and pull it back up. You know, there's a couple spots along this fender. And what this is going to do is this is just going to help kind of show where dirt, dust, stuff like that has a kind of accumulated on the vehicles over its travels. Of course, one of the things we do want to do is pay attention to how how things travel. So, rain and debris is going to bring all this stuff down in a down streaking motion. So that's what we're kind of trying to simulate a little bit there. All right, placing the driver and the steering wheel was kind of an important piece. Once we did that, then we can add the driver's door and the front windshield there so that we make sure that the, uh, the driver's not interfering with the door anywhere. So now we can move on. We're going to add our passenger that'll go in here and holding the rifle. So, uh, you know, he's going to go in and... He's going to sit in and along here, so we're going to get this windshield back. We're going to get some glue on this windshield, get this windshield glued in. Um, actually, why don't we... We're actually going to stick him in. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to put a little glue on his bottom. Get him set in the truck. And we're going to, 
he's going to be sitting there holding the rifle, so we're going to put a rifle in his hand. Now we put a little glue along the bottom of the windshield. All right, that gets our two guys up front. Okay, now with the doors on, we can go ahead, we can add our mirrors. So I've gone ahead, got the arms on, now we're gonna add the mirror heads and have these kind of buttoned up here. Now yeah, we got it set up. So we'll go ahead, we'll let this kind of dry, and now we'll go back and we'll do some touch up paint, paint those arms and all that black, and then put just a little bit of weathering on it there to uh, make it all blend in. Okay, the last few pieces to add in. So we got the crew for the back and our machine guns. So let's go ahead, let's start with the crew. Let's, let's get these two guys that are gonna be seated on the Maramite cans. So. Perfect. We'll let them set a second and then uh, we'll add our last bits, which are machine guns. And we're going to have this pretty well wrapped. Okay, the last few items, we're going to add in the machine guns. All right, I think we've got it pretty well finished up. Okay, folks, that's going to wrap up this episode of Green Iron TV. Hopefully you enjoyed the build of Evo of Destruction, the Vietnam era gun truck uh, in 135th scale from AFV Club. Like always, please take a moment, give us a like. Leave a comment, and if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, be sure to check out the link down below for the merch store. We have all kinds of cool green iron t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, stickers. So check that out. But in the meantime, enjoy the final pictures here of the Eve of Destruction.